Jurisdiction Part 3, Supreme Court. Before I begin the discussion of the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, let me just tell you that there is now a law. This is Republic Act Number 11576. What is this? This is an act further expanding the jurisdiction of the MTC. This new law amends Section 19 of BP Bilang 129 wherein it increases the jurisdictional amount of the RTC. For your real action, what again is a real action? It is an action which involves Title II or possession of real property or any interest therein if before the assessed value if you are in Metro Manila must be 50,000 pesos or 20,000 pesos outside of Metro Manila for RTC to acquire jurisdiction under this new law, it is now 400,000 pesos. The assessed value must be 400,000 pesos except for forcible entry and unlawful detainer of lands and buildings wherein the original jurisdiction remains still with the MTC. What else? RA number 11576 also increases the jurisdictional amount when it comes to maritime jurisdiction. Before, 300,000 and 400,000. But under this new law, the demand or claim must exceed 2 million pesos for RTC to acquire jurisdiction. What else? For matters of testate and antestate probate, the gross value of the estate must exceed 2 million pesos. Last, all other cases in which the demand that is exclusive of your dialect or the value of the personal property in controversy exceeds 2 million pesos, RTC acquires jurisdiction. The new law likewise delegates to the Supreme Court the authority to adjust the jurisdictional amount for first level court. What is your first level court? Those are the MTC and second level courts that is your RTC to reflect the, the extraordinary supervening inflation and deflation of currency, reflect the change in the land valuation, or maintain the proportion of caseload between the first and second level courts without prejudice on the part of the Congress to adjust the amounts when these circumstances warrant. RA number 11576 was signed into law by President Duterte on July 30, 2021, so bago pa lang, and it will take effect 15 days following its publication in the official gazette or in two newspapers of general circulation. So from what I have read in the newspaper, ang kanyang effectivity is August 20, 2021. Ang source natin dito is the Supreme Court website ha, mababasa nyo to. So, if you are taking the 2020-2021 bar examinations, of course, hindi to kasama. So, yung discussion natin, yung mga videos na naipost ko na applicable pa yon. But if you will be taking the 2022 bar examinations, then ito na yung magiging applicable, yung RA number 11576. And I am expecting also maybe there will be some changes with respect to the amount sa summary procedure and also the small claims. So, yung ating mga videos na nakapost dyan, just remember that there is now a new law. The principle may be the same but yung jurisdictional amount is already different. For your real action, the assessed value must be 400,000 pesos. And for your personal action, it must be 2 million pesos for the RTC to acquire jurisdiction. Pag lumabas na yung batas, I will make a separate video about this new law and expect na lang the video. So we'll go now to the Supreme Court's jurisdiction. So, balikan natin ang slide na to. This is our Odeska. But as far as the Supreme Court is concerned, 
walang delegated jurisdiction and walang special jurisdiction. So, ang pag-uusapan lang natin is the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, exclusive original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, the concurrent jurisdiction, as well as the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. So, meron bang original jurisdiction ang Supreme Court Answer is yes, no less than the Constitution, 1987 Constitution, Article 8, Section 5 states that the Supreme Court shall have the following powers exercise original jurisdiction over first cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls and petitions for certiorari, prohibition, mandamus, that is your Rule 65 Co-waranto, that is your Rule 66 and habeas corpus. And ni-reiterate yan when you read your Rules of Court, Rule 56, Section 1, the original cases, cognizable, only petitions for certiorari, prohibition, mandamus, co-waranto, habeas corpus, disciplinary proceedings against members of the judiciary and attorneys, and cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls may be filed originally in the Supreme Court. Take note ha, ang pinag-uusapan pa lang natin is the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Wag mo nang malito. This is only the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. How about the exclusive original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court? Exclusive na, original pa, exclusive meaning to the exclusion of other courts and original it will be filed for the first time in the Supreme Court. So, take note that four decisions rendered by the Court of Appeals, Sandigan Bayan and Court of Tax Appeals, ano ang napansin nyo? They are of the same level. Sabi nga natin dun sa discussion natin sa Sandigan, and Sandigan Bayan and Court of Tax Appeals, they are now of the same level as that of the Court of Appeals. And if sa tingin nyo that these um, bodies, they acted with grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction and you file you want to file a rule 65 that is your petition for cpm where are you going to file this of course dapat sa mas mataas and ano ang mas mataas sa kanilang tatlo that is the supreme court so you will file this exclusively for the first time in the Supreme Court. What else? The constitutional bodies, that is the COMELEC and COA. COMELEC and COA only. If you are going to file also a Rule 65, then saan ang punta mo? Also in the Supreme Court. That is very clear according to the 1987 Constitution. If there is a decision ruling or order of the COMELEC or COA that can be brought before the Supreme Court on certiorari by the aggrieved party. So this is our Rule 65 but again, take note ha, ang if a file mo is Rule 65 petitions for CPM but the rules that you are going to observe is the rules provided in your Rule 64. For the concurrent jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, ang sabi natin that while BP 129 is very clear that RTC and CA exercises original jurisdiction over issuances of the writs of CPM, Coaranto, and habeas corpus, hindi ito exclusive. They share it with other courts like the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court. That is the reason why they are of concurrent jurisdiction. And pag pinag-uusapan ang concurrent jurisdiction, do not forget, do not forget always the principle of the hierarchy of courts. Take note lang ha, pagdating sa cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls, meron lang concurrent jurisdiction ang Supreme Court and RTC. Hindi kasama ang Court of Appeals. 
And just to be very specific about the concurrent jurisdiction of the Court of Appeals and Supreme Court when it comes to your Rule 65, this must be against these bodies, RTC, Civil Service Commission, NLRC, and other quasi-judicial agencies yung listed under Rule 43. So, ang Court of Appeals and Supreme Court meron silang concurrent jurisdiction. But again ha, pag pinag-uusapan si concurrent jurisdiction, you really have to observe the principle or the doctrine of hierarchy of courts. Remember also this slide, palagi na natin tong inuulit. When it comes to habeas data, lahat sila merong concurrent jurisdiction, Court of Appeals, RTC, Sandigan Bayan, and that is also true when you talk about Amparo. But when you talk about habeas corpus, only the Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, and RTC. The same is true when you talk about the writ of continuing mandamus. But pagdating sa writ of kalikasan, si Court of Appeals and Supreme Court lang ang merong concurrent jurisdiction. How about the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court if there is a decision rendered by the Court of Appeals at hindi ka masaya or a decision rendered by the Sandigan Bayan or the Court of Tax Appeals but the Court of Tax Appeals is sitting in bank? Take note ha, itong tatlong to, they are of the same level. Kaya, pag hindi ka masaya dito, saan ang akyat mo, you go to the Supreme Court. But, ito lang ba ang tatlong to na pwedeng iakyat sa Supreme Court? Answer is, of course, no. Because, decisions rendered by the RTC, and as long as you go up to the Supreme Court on the pure on basis of pure question of law, you can also go directly to the Supreme Court. So, how do you go up? That is your Rule 45 Petition for Review on certiorari. But, on my part, ang sinusulat ko dito is yung Appeal by certiorari, kasi mas maikse. Paras lang naman yan. Petition for Review on certiorari or Appeal by certiorari. Wag malito ha. This is Rule 45, meaning to say the case was originally filed in lower courts and iaakyat mo ngayon sa Supreme Court via appeal or via Rule 45. This is very much different from your Rule 65. Yung Rule 65 na dinidiscuss natin kanina kung saan merong exclusive original jurisdiction ang Supreme Court that is an original action. It will be filed for the first time in the Supreme Court Rule 65. Before we go to the bar exam questions, segue muna tayo para mas lalo ninyong maintindihan. We said that the Court of Appeals, they exercise its powers, functions, and duties through divisions. There are 23 divisions and each division is composed of three members. And when do the Court of Appeals sit in bank? They sit in bank only for the purpose of exercising admin, ceremonial, or non-adjudicatory functions. Let's compare it to the Supreme Court. 1987 Constitution is very clear that the Constitution, that, that the Supreme Court is composed of a Chief Justice and 14 Associate Justices, so 15 silang lahat. They can sit in bank or in its discretion in divisions of 3, 5, or 7 members. Binabalikan ko to ha kasi this is your first Sunday and ang remedial law is already your fourth Sunday by this time. Nakalimutan nyo na to. So, balikan natin. What else? The Supreme Court, they sit in bank for cases involving the constitutionality of a treaty, international or executive agreement or law, and again, they must be heard by the Supreme Court in bank. What else? All other cases which under the rules of court are required to be heard in bank, including those involving the constitutionality, application or operation of PD, proclamation, orders, instructions, ordinances, and other regulations. Kailan pa nagsisit in bank ang Supreme Court when the 
matter is heard or when a case is heard by a division but the required number is not obtained, then the case shall be decided in bank provided that no doctrine or principle laid down by the court in a decision rendered in bank or in division may be modified or reversed except by the court sitting in bank. So, bar exam question 1990, after the first division of the Supreme Court decided a case, the losing party sought a reconsideration from the Supreme Court in bank. Is the action taken by the said losing party proper? Definitely, the answer is no. Hindi mo pwedeng i-appeal ang decision ng Supreme Court division to the Supreme Court in bank. Very clear ang constitution that the Supreme Court in bank will hear only these cases, cases involving the constitutionality of a treaty or cases involving the constitutionality of an international agreement or executive agreement or law. What else? Yung cases which under the rules of court are required to be heard by the Supreme Court in bank, including those involving the constitutionality application or operation of PDs, proclamations, orders, instructions, ordinances, and other regulations. But are there instances wherein it is a, a case decided by a division but a hear ng Supreme Court in bank? Answer is yes. Because if you continue reading the Constitution sa Article 8, nakasulat ja that if there is a case or matter that is heard by a division of the Supreme Court, ang rule is it should be decided or resolved with, with the concurrence of a majority of the members who actually took part in the deliberations on the issues in the case and voted thereon. So that is the rule. But what will happen if the required number is not obtained, then the case now shall be decided by the Supreme Court in bank. So this is the only instance wherein a decision of the division of the Supreme Court will be heard by the Supreme Court in bank, provided that no doctrine or principle of law laid down by the court in a decision rendered in bank or in division may be modified or reversed except by the court sitting in bank. 2012 Bar Exam Question MCQ number 83, a decision or resolution of the Supreme Court Division when concurred in by blank members who actually took part in the deliberation on the issues in a case and voted thereon is a decision or resolution of the Supreme Court. Choices are letter A, 3, letter B, 5, letter C, 8, and letter D, 10. So what is the answer here? Answer is letter A. 3. Bakit naging 3? Let's discuss. We said that the Supreme Court, they sit in bank or in division. And the, the division is 3, 5, or 7 members. And if there is a case and that case is heard by, division, by a division, what is the rule? It must be decided or resolved with the concurrence of a majority of the members who actually took part in the deliberations in the issues in the case and voted thereon. But hindi lang yan ang rule. Meron pang kaakibat yan. The word used is and. And in no case without the concurrence of at least three such members. Take note of that ha, that is very important. So, dapat merong concurrence of at least three members. So, that is the reason why the answer is three. Down to our last slide, bar exam question MCQ 2012 number 93. If the Supreme Court in bank is equally divided in opinion covering an original action, the case shall be, choices are, letter A, re-raffled to a division. Letter B, the original action shall be dismissed. Letter C, the judgment appealed from shall be official. 
or letter D, it will be again deliberated upon. Take note here that the Supreme Court is sitting in back. So what is the answer? The answer is letter B. The original action shall be dismissed. What is our basis? You read Rule 56, Section 7, when the court in bank is equally divided in opinion or the, the necessary majority cannot be had, then the case shall again be deliberated upon and if after such deliberation no decision is reached, then the original action commenced in the court shall be dismissed. Actually, pwede rin ang letter D, but the answer of the UP Law Center is letter B. And in appealed cases, the judgment or order appealed from shall stand affirmed and on all incidental matters, the petition or motion shall be denied.